it's meat time. That means we're going into Costco and we're gonna do a meat review. Not like we're gonna taste every piece of meat, but we're gonna go in there and we're gonna find which kinds of meat at Costco are the best value and bang for the buck as well as intertwining the health perspective. So where do you get the most health value for your buck when it comes down to meat? Is it gonna be chicken? Is it gonna be turkey, beef, pork, salmon? What is it? Costco has a lot of awesome options, so we're gonna go in there and we're gonna figure it out. Let's rock. One of the best things about Costco is they really do put their best foot forward when it comes down to the meat quality and the meat selection that they have. It's just our job to figure out where we can get the best value. Now, in the past, I've noticed that Costco does a tremendous job with their red meat selection. They have all kinds of different steaks, all kinds of different bites and options, things like that. So we're gonna go and we're gonna find out what they have today so that you can go into Costco and get the best bang for your buck. Doing things a little bit differently today. Coming in here bright and early to see if I can make it here when it's quiet. The hard part is at Costco, the meat section is always pretty packed, so I'm kind of trying not to be rude and trying to intertwine and, I don't know, navigate the best that I can without bumping into people. So anyhow, it's a little bit quiet here. It's a nice thing to see. It's always nice to navigate Costco when it's easy. But let's see what we've got. Okay, let's start right with the ground beef and the ground bison because by and large, this is probably the better value that you're gonna find. And if you get one thing out of this video, hopefully it's how to navigate this portion. So let's take a look at what they've got. Okay, the first thing that I see, which is actually pretty cool, is their standard ground beef, although it's gonna be typically grain-fed, normal stuff, is 88% lean. Normally, if you go to a regular grocery store, you're gonna find that the regular beef is about 80%. So it's nice that this is a higher protein to fat ratio at still the same kind of $3.99 a pound price that you would get at a normal grocery store. So very good value, but we just don't know how clean it really is because it's more than likely the typical grain-fed stuff. We wanna go for, well, as clean as possible. So now let's jump over and let's take a look at the organic ground beef. Well, it's organic, but it's not grass-fed or grass-finished. So does that really mean too much? Well, let's break it down. All right, so we do have this raised without antibiotics. That doesn't mean that they've never had antibiotics. Very important to note. Raised without antibiotics doesn't necessarily mean they were never given them. Okay, no added growth hormones, but they could have been given other hormones. Okay, USD organic, US, excuse me, USDA organic. Unfortunately, it's getting a little bit saturated and it doesn't mean as much as it used to. Let's see if there's anything else that we can see here. Um, there's the distribution. Well. Let me just give you an example here of how we could compare it because we have three packets of ground beef that's going to get us to, I don't even see a price on this. Hang on. Well, that makes it tough because the price tag is missing, but let's take a look at the bison as a comparison. Now, bison has different standards with the FDA. So again, raised without antibiotics, no added hormones, minimally processed, uh, no artificial, federal regulations prohibit the use of hormones in bison. Okay, so we know there's no hormones at all because federal regulations don't even allow hormones in bison at all. Downside is you're only getting two packets here and that ends up being $7.99 a pound. That's pretty pricey. The good thing to note is that bison typically has a lower fat content compared to typical grain-fed meat. So yes, you could make the argument that most bison is grass-fed because most of it is, except if it comes from specific feedlots that are starting to grow, unfortunately. But you have a lower fat profile, which is going to be good. You also find that it's less saturated fat and more in the way of mono and polyunsaturated fats, which if you're doing a low carb diet, those are the kind of fats that you want. I'm not saying that saturated fats are bad, but you definitely get more heart health benefit out of like oleic acid, polyunsaturated fats that might actually give you a little bit of alpha linolenic acid. Um, essentially your omega-3s. I would say that the bison is still the best value as far as health bang for the buck is there, because $7.99 for that is a pretty darn good price, especially when the regular ground beef is not grass-fed. Okay, when it comes to steaks and things like that, always try to go for the grass-fed, grass-finished when you can, but there's some general rules of thumb that you can follow if you cannot get your hands on that. If you're going to be able to get, or if you're, excuse me, going to be getting regular grain-fed meat, you're going to have uh, a few more issues that come up, okay? Mainly being the antibiotics, okay? The antibiotics that have to be given to grain-fed meats are significantly higher simply because there's going to be different compounds that form in the animal because of the grain. Another thing that's been noted recently is the omega-3 value of grass-fed meat helps have an antibiotic property. So 
So what happens is when the meats are fed a lot of grain, it creates an acidotic state in the body. It makes the meat more acidic when the cow is alive, meaning that bacteria that are not so good can thrive a little bit more. This is relatively new. Now we've seen lots of evidence before that the omega-3 profile in good quality meat is good, but we had no idea about the bacterial content and how that can have an effect. So we do wanna be looking for that, and that's largely going to be in the fat because toxins are stored in the fat, antibiotics are stored in the fat. So if you have a grain-fed meat, you wanna be going as lean as possible. So for example, if you're gonna splurge on a ribeye, spend a couple extra bucks and get a ribeye that's grass-fed versus a ribeye that's corn-fed or grain-fed. Look at this, if we look at a ribeye, now USDA Choice doesn't have anything to do with the actual quality of the, like the health attributes of the meat. But look, at you got these big fatty ribbons. Now what you could do is you could cut the fat out. But then what's the point in having a delicious ribeye if you're doing that? Now I know it's a lot more expensive, but a beef uh, tenderloin like this, a filet, that's gonna be about as lean as you can get in this particular area, Costco. I mean, you could get like a London Royal or something and trim it, but quality wise, if you're going to go with a grain fed, this price on filet mignon is killer. That $14.99 for a good quality filet mignon. So if you're trying to find the balance of what kind of steak to get, while still having affordability, but still having something healthy, go for a filet mignon where the meat quality is still going to be good, but you're gonna have less of the fats holding those toxins, holding those antibiotics, holding those potential hormones. It makes a big difference. I'll make a quick note here because I'm a huge fan of flank steak. Okay, if I'm usually recommending that someone is meal prepping or anything like that, I will usually recommend a flank steak because you can cut it up, you can cook it, and it's really, really, really lean. Take a look at this. You practically see no fat on that. That's what I'm really talking about. You're going for a good quality that doesn't have a lot of fat. It'd be easy to sear that off, no big deal. If you are gonna get a fattier cut of meat that's not grass-fed or grass-finished, if you get one like this, like a, like a ch um, you know, chuck roast or anything like that, a lot of times if you see a big sheath of fat, that usually means that it's a big chunk of saturated fat that you could feasibly trim off. What I am weary of is marbling. I know that sounds bad because the marbling is what we're usually looking for. Good, healthy marbling means good you know, taste and good texture. But in the world of trying to keep your fatty acid profile nice and trying to keep your keto diet or your low carb diet under check or just consuming the right fats, we have to be weary of it because it's harder to get those fats out. But if you take a nice roast that has a layer of saturated fat on it, it's easy to trim that. You can get rid of it and still get the good quality meat. Now the saturated fat is actually not necessarily the unhealthy part. It's just the fact that it's harder to navigate around in a lot of cases uh, if it's intertwined within the meat. So you'll see as we get through this video when I talk about pork and other things that we want good profiles of like monounsaturated fats and good polyunsaturated fats. And it's gonna dictate how you should cook meat as far as what denatures the fats and what makes them different. Then we get into the world of lamb. Like lamb and mutton is going to have some of the highest omega-3 content of any meat that's out there. The problem is, ethically, how do you feel about it? There's a lot of people that don't feel good about lamb. Um, this company, Thomas Farms, does state that they're raised without antibiotics or added hormones and humanely raised on sustainable family farms. Don't really know what that means, but it says our lambs roam free on native Australian pastures and in accordance with our livestock sourcing procedure standards. Now, Australia and New Zealand have different standards. So if you get imported New Zealand or imported Australian beef or anything like that, a lot of times it is truly grass-fed and they have different standards as far as the antibiotics are concerned. But when they import it in, sometimes there's additional things that they look at and we have to be weary of it. But lamb is definitely a clean, clean, clean meat. Now, the omega-3s that you're gonna find in lamb aren't exactly the same omega-3s you're gonna find in fish. Okay, it's called alpha-linolenic acid, which has to get converted into EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, so do the omega-3s matter? Well, they do because it means that if you have more omega-3s in it, you automatically have less omega-6s. So by default, you're with a higher quality meat and a higher quality fat ratio. We also find that the amino acid profile within lamb is really, really easy to assimilate. For whatever reason, it's been touted as some of the best muscle building meat that's out there. You see it on forums, you see people talking about it. A lot of um, no real clinical evidence backing that up, but personally, I like it. I just I just have a hard time eating a baby sheep. It, it, for me, it's just tough, but good quality, and that's a really good price. Look at this, $5.33 a pound for that. So bang for the buck wise, killer, killer deal if you can get around it and feel good about it. Okay, now we're getting to the pork section. Pork is cool. Why? Because it is so, so high in monounsaturated fats. 
these monounsaturated fats convert mainly into what is called oleic acid within the body. Now, I've talked about this in other videos, but this oleic acid does is it can help elevate a lot of different uh, proteins in the body that stimulate thermogenesis and allow your body to burn a little bit more fat. Now, this isn't just me saying this. There is some really strong evidence with this. So the cool thing with pork is the ratio of monounsaturated fat to polyunsaturated fat to saturated fat is very high. It's mainly monounsaturated fat. And you can cook monounsaturated fats at a relatively decent temperature without denaturing them. So that means you're left with a good quality fat that's not having a negative impact as far as lipid peroxidation goes in your body, and you're left with a high quality protein. And look at this, the saturated fat that is there, it's easy to trim off. So you could cook it, trim that off, and then a little bit of marbling that you have in there, still some saturated fat, but you have a good amount of, again, those monounsaturated fats. So when it comes down to that conversion process I was talking about uh, into oleolethanolamine, OEA, this is a very big deal. So if you're doing keto or you're doing fasting or anything like that, you want to have as much of these monounsaturated fats and as much of this OEA as you can. That's why I'm such a big fan of a Mediterranean style diet because of that, okay? Because we get the olive oils, we get the avocado oils, which have a very similar effect. But if you can get it from meat too, and you're having this, what's called PPAR alpha activation, you're having this uncoupling protein activation, these are all huge metabolic drivers, keeping your metabolism healthy for a very long time. Now, as far as value with the pork goes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say the pork sirloin tip roast is gonna be probably the best bang for the buck because you're getting a lot of protein, not as much fat, but you're still getting the monounsaturated fats. And it looks like a high quality meat if you cook it well. So take a look at this one. $1.99 a pound, okay? $17.77 for all of this. Okay, you put that in a smoker, you cook that slow, that's gonna be really good. Out of all the high fat foods that you could eat, I would recommend pork as the fat that you choose. So again, if we look at like pork belly, for instance, look at all the fat on that. One might look at that and say, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But the fatty acid that's gonna be in there, again, is the monounsaturated fats, and the saturated fat is going to be mainly steric acid with a little bit of palmitic acid. Steric acid can help stimulate what is called mitochondrial fusion. Now, let me explain what that is and get out of the way of some people so that I can really get into some science for just a second. When you are changing your dietary habits, your mitochondria is adjusting to new energies, okay? Maybe if you go from you consuming a bunch of carbohydrates to all of a sudden you consuming a bunch of fats, it takes a couple of weeks for the mitochondria to adjust to utilizing fats. It's called mitochondrial biogenesis. If you have a good amount of healthy steric acid fats, there's different kinds of saturated fats, steric acid, maristic acid, palmitic acid, okay? Maristic and steric acid are the really good saturated fats. Palmitic is not as good. Steric acid can help support the mitochondria and actually help out what is called mitochondrial fusion, which can support the mitochondria getting better at utilizing different fuel. So if you're going from eating carbs to all of a sudden eating a bunch of fats doing keto, the more good healthy steric acid saturated fats you have, the better likelihood of your mitochondria adapting and using fats better quicker is. So pork is definitely good to go in that. And that's why I would recommend things like the um, fat back or pork belly or anything like that, where you're getting those fats. If you're going to eat high fat ribeye steaks and stuff like that, you're getting a little bit of a different fatty acid profile, especially if it's not grass fed, grass finished. Favorite steaks, if we're back to steak for a second, is gonna be a New York, okay? Still pretty lean if you were to trim, again, this saturated fat, okay? Now, again, with beef, you're looking a little bit more maristic, palmitic acid, a little less steric acid. But the nice thing with beef is you get something called conjugated linoleic acid. Maybe you've heard of a supplement before called CLA, okay, conjugated linoleic acid. What that is, is a fat that is technically a trans fat. And it's usually found in you know, ruminants. So it's gonna be like goats, sheep, uh, beef obviously. And conjugated linoleic acid has been demonstrated to have some modest effects on weight loss. It has to do with how it activates specific enzymes, different gene expression. We're supposed to have small amounts of it. You're really only gonna get it with beef. You're not gonna get it with pork. You might get a little bit with some sheep and some lamb and stuff like that, but really we're looking more so at the beef for that. And New York steaks are just a great way to get that because you can trim off that saturated fat and still get that. So again, good to rotate your meats up. $7.99 a pound for this is also very, very good. So you can get, you know, 35 bucks, you can get four really good quality steaks. I would say if you're looking for just a steak that's going to be generally healthy, something that you could have once a week or so, this would be a good one. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out ButcherBox down below in the description too. 
I know Costco's got some amazing deals, and I'm totally pro Costco in this case, but there are some really good deals if you utilize ButcherBox and you wanna get the meat delivered right to your doorstep. It's what I generally use. I'll get some bison, I'll get some lamb occasionally at Costco, but most of the meat that I get is coming from ButcherBox and it's getting delivered to my doorstep. So a lot of times it ends up being less expensive than the grocery store, but the biggest piece is super convenient and super easy, and it's grass-fed, grass-finished meat, so you're getting high-quality stuff. But they don't just have beef, they have chicken, they have pork, they have sausages, they have hot dogs, they have so much good stuff, bacon. Their ground beef is like my favorite. So there is a link down below if you wanna check them out and get the meat delivered to your doorstep. I highly recommend it. They're a big supporter of this channel as well. We do a lot of content together, so thank you to them. But please do check them out down below in the description. We're starting to get a little bit closer to Thanksgiving. So something to note about turkeys, is that turkeys are usually riddled with antibiotics. Why? Because everyone wants a big, juicy turkey. So we're growing turkeys as big as we can, which, what does that mean? That means as a matter of space, they're crammed together and they're probably living in their own feces and things like that. So we load them up with antibiotics, load them up with hormones, we load them up with more antibiotics to handle the fact that they're growing so fast, to handle the fact that there's genetic mutations occurring. It's scary stuff. So by and large, I usually recommend having chicken over turkey. However, chicken, you run into a cruddier fatty acid profile, which I'll talk about in a second. I don't want you to become like obsessed with choosing the right meat all the time, but this is all good knowledge for you to have. Enjoy your Thanksgiving turkey. Don't worry about it. Have some friends over. California, we're only allowed to have three houses over, which is kind of funny, but I don't know who's really counting. Anyway, when you look at a turkey, yeah, it's something that you should probably be having like with Thanksgiving. I just don't think it's something that you wanna be having all the time. If you have an option to have ground chicken over ground turkey, anyway, I digress, we'll talk about this in a second. So chicken breast, you're granted a little bit of amnesty because chicken breast, again, very lean, you're not having a lot of the fat sitting in it. When you cook it, you're really gonna be getting in a lot of the, the toxins that are out normally in the fats. I still highly recommend going organic when you can because what's happening with chicken is they're feeding them grain and soy no matter what. So it doesn't matter if you get organic or not. You're gonna be ingesting some soy from it. You're gonna be ingesting some grains from it unless you know exactly where the stuff is coming from. So what ends up happening there is, well, would you rather have completely GMO soy that is notably terrible, or would you rather have organic soy coming in through your chicken? I would say go for the organic soy, especially when we looked at the price difference here. Take a look at this. Air chilled, we have $4.99 a pound for organic boneless skinless. Okay, now let's head on down the line just a little bit. And if we go to non-organic, $2.89 a pound. So yes, it's over a dollar cheaper, but like the quality, first of all, like the quality is just, you can see it. Okay, go for the organic one, spend a little bit more, and you arguably can assimilate more of the protein from this organic one than you could from the non-organic. Now, chicken thighs, if you get chicken thighs, which this is a great deal for it, it's very important you go organic, but I highly recommend, I highly dissuade you from having chicken thighs that have the skin on it. Okay, again, comes down to what is being stored in the fats, what's being stored in the skin. Chicken thighs are gonna be a higher fat content, and poultry in general does not have the best fatty acid profile. So remember I said if you're gonna have fat from your meat, have it from pork, if you're gonna have fat from your meat, have it from bacon. If you're gonna have fat from your meat, have it from good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat where you can control it a little bit more. Try not to get your fat from turkey and chicken fat, okay? You're loading up on a bunch of soy, a bunch of phytoestrogens, a bunch of things that are stored in the fat of the turkey or the chicken, which is already not the best fatty acid profile. Very high polyunsaturated fats, which means that when you cook it, those fats are going to denature and become relatively toxic and go through what's called lipid peroxidation. Does this mean you need to be afraid of chicken thigh? No, have a drumstick now and then, enjoy your life. But if you're meal prepping and you're making a lot of different foods, go for the chicken breast. Add the fats additionally, which gives me to another note that I really think is important, especially if you're doing keto. If you were to eat a fatty cut of meat, you don't know the exact amount of fat that you're getting. So let's say you have two five ounce ribeyes next to each other. One five ounce ribeye might have 30 grams of fat in it. One other five ounce ribeye might have 12 grams of fat in it. And largely most people wouldn't be able to know by looking at it. That's a big problem. So what do you do? Well, you opt for leaner cuts of meat and it might make it a little bit easier. What I mean by that 
is if you go for a leaner cut of meat, you can control the fats that you add to that better. So you could have a lean cut of steak and not be dependent on the fats coming from the steak that are questionable and unaccounted for and not really quantifiable. Or you could have that steak and you could actually add some good healthy fats like some macadamia nuts or some fats that you're in control of, like some ghee or even some butter. Something that you know and can quantify, can count, and truly know what you're getting. That way you're not guessing, did I have 600 calories with this ribeye or did I have 300, depending on how much marbling was in it. So you're catching my drift. Leaner is generally better. And the fun thing is, is grass-fed, grass-finished meats are usually leaner as is because they're not having as much, you guessed it, de novo lipogenesis from all the carbs, all the grains, everything they're having going into just fat. It's a way to get the cow big, but it's not a way to get the cow healthy. Grass-fed, grass-finished is usually the way to go. Again, I'm saying you can have options, but I digress. Let's get back to the meat. Okay, so we've got ground turkey here, which is a, a good deal. But if you are going to go with ground turkey, again, as lean as you possibly can, okay? Ground turkey, 93% lean is lean, but other stores have it even leaner. I would usually go for like a 98 or a 99 if I'm going to go with turkey. Not a bad deal, but 547 per pound, or 549, excuse me, when I can get organic chicken breast, I don't know, for cheaper, probably do that. It's just convenient to be able to cook this. Let me show you something. Have you ever seen the difference between the calorie count or the fat count of chicken thigh with the skin versus without, your mind's about to be blown. Check this out. So these are boneless, skinless chicken thighs, non-organic versus fresh chicken thighs, non-organic, okay? 130 calories with four and a half grams of fat, 250 calories with 19 grams of fat. I hope that this convinces you to get meat without the skin. That is such a waste of calories and you're not getting much nutrition. You're getting low quality fats in the skin. You're getting a little bit of collagen that is honestly not gonna do much. It's all deaminated in the labral pool anyway, which means that the amino acids you get from meat and the amino acids you get from collagen ultimately end up in the same place and getting reallocated into peptide bonds where they need to go. That's nerd talk for protein is generally protein unless you are specifically taking like a collagen supplement. What about wings for a second? Wings are kind of in the same boat because wings are good with skin. Wings without skin, practically nothing. Um, again, a lot of this, the fat is coming from the skin. I would not generally say wings are a healthy keto dish or a good meat you want to typically have a lot of. They are more of a cheat meal. And then lastly, over here, before we get into the fish, we have some ground turkey. Uh, this isn't even worth really talking about. Two ninety nine a pound, but it's 93% lean, non-organic, foster farms, probably not the best stuff. So, so far to recap, we've got the bison being probably one of the better ones, the ground lamb being one of the best ones. Um, We've got their filet mignon being just an amazing, amazing value. We've got their flank steak being amazing. We've got their New York steak as the best kind of well-rounded steak. We've got their pork options, um, like again, a tenderloin or any kind of uh, fat strap or any kind of, what was it called? Oh, the pork belly that they had over there. We're getting the good fatty acid profiles from the pork itself. Those are tremendous options. Now let's jump over and let's take a look at some of the meat and some of the uh, excuse me, some of the seafood and some of the other stuff here. Okay, it's raised without antibiotics. That's good. It's still farmed. Now, let me show you the difference here. Light pink, dark red. Now, this is wild sockeye. Okay, look at that difference. Dark red, pink. Dark red, pink. Let me give you a little science lesson as to why it is that way, because it's really nerdy, but exceptionally cool. The reason that salmon is pink is because of an antioxidant called astaxanthin. So what does salmon do? Well, they swim aggressively upstream. And when they swim aggressively upstream, they are working out. And what happens when we work out, as humans or animals in general? We create a lot of oxidative stress. It's stressful on the body. And that means that we need to have antioxidants to combat what's called the reactive oxygen species or the stress that's in our body. If we didn't have that, our muscles would essentially almost go sour, right? It would just, they'd be so impacted by the stress from working out that they would be become problematic. Well, that would happen with fish. So the more red the fish is, the more astaxanthin it has, which means that astaxanthin is protecting the fats. It's protecting the meat. The deeper the red color that's not artificially added, the better the quality of the meat is going to be because it's essentially been preserved by the astaxanthin, by that antioxidant. 
So when it's farm raised, it doesn't need that natural antioxidant because it's living a life of luxury, not having to do anything, not having to work its butt off like the sockeye salmon is. So like anything in life, good things come to those who work hard. And this salmon is high quality because it worked hard and you get to benefit that. Yes, you spend a couple bucks. Actually, no, you don't. Check this out. $9.99 for lean, deep red sockeye salmon, or we can spend $9.99 for fatty, lower quality, farm-raised salmon. Okay, arguably, it doesn't taste as amazingly fresh and tender and fatty because look, it, there's less fat because these suckers worked out. They were swimming upstream like monsters, okay? But the omega-3 profile that you're going to actually get from it is stabilized and protected. Omega-3s are fragile. If you were to leave a fish out on the counter, it's gonna go rancid and sour in a couple hours and it's gonna smell terrible. That's because the omega-3s are fragile. They're good for you, but they're fragile. So what happens if you have an antioxidant that preserves them? They don't go sour as quickly. So heck yes, that wild-caught sockeye is an amazing value. One of my all-time favorite fishes right here is Chilean sea bass. So good. So expensive though, $20 a pound. I just can't say that this would be, this would be just a nice dish to have. That is however, about $10 cheaper than I have at Safeway. I'm in Northern California. So Northern California or Central Coast, uh, Safeway is our main regular grocery store like a Kroger or a Randall's or, anyway, it's about 28 bucks there. Whereas it's nice, so that's a great value. Fatty acid profile of sea bass is tremendous. So definitely recommend that. Uh, it's just expensive. Now cod, ridiculously lean. Nice thing about cod is super high in choline. So you're going to get a nice mineral balance there. It's just a good fish in general. It's so lean, it's easy to control. Uh, it's easy to digest, which plays a big part because we forget that there's a mechanical element of digestion too. Okay, it's not just you know acids and biles and things like that. Like if something is physically easier to break down, that's better. Uh, so that's a really good deal on cod. It's like three something a pound but cod you can get anywhere. And the nice thing about the Costco cod is it is Alaskan leader brand, which I've done some work with them before. Good brand out of Alaska, really high quality stuff. I'll ask about rockfish all the time. Uh, for the price per pound, you'd be better off to go with the cod. It's not that high quality of a fish. Um, and then we have black cod, which to be frank, I don't know a whole, whole lot about. Uh, probably should do some research on that one. Then we have fresh farm steelhead, which is like salmon, but a tiny bit different. Uh, you can see it's a little bit more red, but that's just by nature of what it is. $8.99 a pound. If you're really pinching pennies, it's not, it's just not even worth it. Then we have tilapia. It's fresh, it's farmed. They're going to swear up and down that it's good, but it's still tilapia. Please do not get this stuff. It is overly produced. Uh, I don't know where it is. It's a, this one's a product of Mexico. Most of it's coming out of China. Um, the issue with tilapia is simple. It is one of the lowest quality fish as far as nutrients are concerned, but then how they raise it, how they breed it, they have to load it with antibiotics because they're just swimming in their own feces, their own filth. There are even studies that, or, or experiments that show that if you have a chicken that poops into water, the fish, the tilapia can eat the chicken poop and survive. And then they feed the chicken, the dead fish when it finally dies. And it's the self little perpetuating ecosystem where tilapia can live on chicken poop meaning it's just terrible anyway and that's practically what they do so just avoid tilapia gelfish is my jam okay zinc choline phosphorus selenium if you could live on shellfish you should because it is so unbelievably high quality i did a video a while back saying like if you can afford it breaking your fast with good quality shellfish is one of the best ways to go so if you uh, intermittent fast or anything like that. Shellfish is going to provide you with easy to assimilate amino acids, but also the minerals that you need to really sustain that homeostasis that you need after a fast. Just delicious stuff, easy to break down, high amino acid profile, and the minerals you really need. Now, their fresh shrimp is great and everything like that, but you can get a lot of stuff frozen, so it's almost better to just spend the money, or let me, should I say not spend the money, and get the frozen stuff. I mean, it's great, but shellfish is shellfish. You can get shrimp frozen really cheap, it's still wild caught. Uh, that's important to note in general. The wild caught stuff is great, uh, but you can still find it frozen, right? It doesn't have to be fresh. Costco has some delicious scallops. 15 bucks a pound is pretty good for scallops. These are the big ones too. Uh, 
definitely a good choice there. And these are frozen. There's nothing wrong with it. See, as soon as they are caught, they're flash frozen, which is a great thing. Which by the way, Butcher Box, which is linked down below, like I mentioned before, also has scallops. So if you want to check them out, if you're into seafood, they have a wide variety of seafood too. So that way you can you know, have everything you want. I guess one of the biggest things that I want to mention here is that the saturated fat that you get in meat is not bad. Saturated fat is only bad if it becomes oxidized. Or what I mean by that is, when you consume saturated fat, it temporarily stops a receptor in your liver from absorbing LDL. So what can happen is it can confuse people because there is a link in some ways that saturated fat can drive up cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. But it's doing so in a way that is perfectly normal and perfectly natural and temporary. If I were to go and eat a bunch of saturated fat right now, my LDL cholesterol would go up in a few hours simply because it's stopping the LDL receptors in the liver. It's sort of like a reverse vacuum in a way. So then my liver doesn't have the ability to absorb the LDL, so it piles up. Is that bad? No, but if you had a lot of inflammation because you're consuming a lot of sugar along with the saturated fat, then that LDL goes through what's called oxidation. And when it oxidizes, that's when it causes the big problem because the oxidation can trigger arterial plaque, it can trigger you know, just that, the immune system to activate. It's not the saturated fat itself that's bad. However, there are some saturated fats that occupy or trigger the occupation of, oops, that trigger the occupying of those LDL receptors more, uh, mainly palmitic acid. So like I talked about before, when you have steric acid or you have palmitic acid, it's going to be a different ball game. Steric acid, which is again, what you're mainly going to find in like pork and to some degree in high quality beef, that's going to be one that converts in the body somewhat to that same oleic acid I talked about uh, earlier with the monounsaturated fats. So not all saturated fats remain as saturated fats. They break down and they turn into other fats. All that different fats are, are different carbon chains, different lengths of carbons bound together. If you wanna get into the biochemistry of it, we can talk about it in another video. Don't be afraid of the saturated fats in your meat, especially if it's good quality meat. The biggest issue that's coming from saturated fat is the potential storage of the toxins and what the animal has been fed as far as antibiotics, as far as toxins, as far as cruddy food. So it's not the end of the world. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check out, but as always, thank you so much for keeping it locked in and I'll see you tomorrow.